What we know so far is that it sprung a leak, effectively. Um, there is a plume of, uh, of coolant material uh, coming from one of the radiators on the outside of the Soyuz module. And this is probably ammonia, which uh, on hitting space instantly freezes. Uh, so the telemetry we've had, the images that we've had, have shown this uh, almost a snowstorm of material surrounding the International Space Station. Uh, so, and, and that uh, also tallies with loss of pressure within the system. So we know it's a real phenomenon. Um, it uh, caused the postponement of a spacewalk by two Russian uh, cosmonauts, uh, partly because with stuff like that floating around the space station, ammonia is highly corrosive. And if that's what it is, you don't want flakes of this stuff landing on, on astronaut suits or cosmonaut suits. Uh, so that's the, the immediate situation. The longer term prospects are um, perhaps more concerning uh, in terms of what that might mean for the escape uh, lifeboat that is uh, offered to uh, astronauts and cosmonauts by the Soyuz space spacecraft that's docked on the International Space Station. I understand that NASA believes that the cause is a micrometeorite. Explain what that is to us, and is this a common or rare occurrence? It, it's, it's quite common, really, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, dusty environment in which the Earth sits. Um, technically, it will be known as a micrometeoroid, uh, which uh, is what a micrometeorite is before it hits anything. Uh, so the micro micrometeoroids are basically dust particles which exist in the Earth's environment. Uh, we know um, that they are common. They have hit the James Webb Space Telescope, among others. Uh, but it's not often that you get something like this where real damage is done uh, to some of the infrastructure that is in, in space. Uh, it, it, even though this is probably a tiny dust particle, it can be traveling at up to 30 or 40 kilometers per second relative to the spacecraft. And that's what gives it the energy uh, to punch a hole in the cooling system, if that indeed is what it is. Do you think this could jeopardize future trips in the Soyuz capsule? Well, that's the, the, the $64,000 question at the moment. Is that capsule still spaceworthy? Is it still functional enough to bring uh, the three astronauts that it took to, uh, to the space station back down to Earth? And that should really be one astronaut and two cosmonauts, two Russians and one American uh, space, space flight uh, astronauts. So um, that we will find out more about over the next couple of days. Uh, we will establish whether uh, there is any risk involved in using that spacecraft to bring people back to Earth. The, the plan is to use it to bring the, the scientists and, uh, and astronauts back to Earth uh, in March next year. Now, that's the schedule, but um, if it does turn out to be unserviceable, that increases the risk level because this is a, a lifeboat, as I explained. There are currently seven uh, people on board the International Space Station, three Russians, three Americans and one Japanese uh, astronaut. Um, they are serviced by, in terms of getting off the space station, by the Soyuz spacecraft and a crew dragon, a SpaceX crew dragon, uh, which brought the other astronauts up to the space station. That is also standing by to return them, but also to act as a lifeboat in case of need. So the long-term future um, is that there may be a need for Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, uh, to launch launch uh, a second Soyuz spacecraft to act as a, a return vessel for uh, the, 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 the astronauts and cosmonauts who, who flew up in it originally. Fred, if we look back on the year that's been, uh, what have been the space highlights that have stood out to you? Um, it's it's hard to know what which to pick as the top uh, of the list, but the James Webb Space Telescope's successful deployment and uh, and commissioning earlier in the year, leading to uh, since July a whole series of marvelous images of the infrared universe that we're seeing uh, from the James Webb Telescope. That has been, I think, one of the triumphs uh, of the of the of the year. It's a NASA project with other space agencies 
is involved and, and, and promises to bring us even more dramatic images, but also some extraordinary science which will uh, stretch from the beginnings of the universe uh, to, the, uh, to the planets around other stars in our neighborhood. That's one. Another that stood out for me is NASA's DART mission. And DART was, uh, is an acronym for the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, which was a test to show whether an impact by a spacecraft can actually shift the orbit of an asteroid, which is something we may one day need to do for real. The answer is yes, we can. It was a triumph in terms of the, uh, you know, the calculations that were involved because it actually turned out to be very, very successful. And finally, the Artemis 1 launch around the moon at the end of the year, uh, left in November, came back a few days ago. Uh, and that was a dress rehearsal for the first crewed mission to the moon, uh, which will take place probably uh, the year after next or maybe the following year. Yes, who could forget all of those? We've been covering it um, here on The World and watching it very closely. One to look out for next year is progress on the Square Kilometre Array Telescope in Western Australia. Yeah. That's right. That's correct. A few days ago, um, we had a ceremony uh, to, to mark the start of construction of the Square Kilometre Array Telescope, which has two components, one in Western Australia at the Murchison Radio Astronomy Observatory, also known as Inyarimana Ilgari Bundara in the Wadjuri language. That uh, is a very exciting prospect. Its other half is in South Africa. Uh, so these two telescopes will, by the end of the decade, be working together once again to reveal the secrets of the universe. Very exciting. Meanwhile, are we expecting to see significant developments in China's space program next year? Indeed. The, so the, the space station that the China National Space Administration operates uh, is growing. Uh, they, there are additional modules that have been sent up to the space station. It is currently crewed. Uh, there are three Taikonauts uh, on board the spacecraft. Uh, we expect that it will be joined by a large space telescope, uh, which China is planning to launch during 2023. And meanwhile, their ambitions on exploring the moon continue. The, uh, the Chang'e uh, 4 uh, lander is sitting on the far side of the moon doing extraordinary science. We've seen some really quite remarkable results that have told us a lot about the, the state of the moon, the origin of the moon's volcanism, for example, how it has evolved over its 4.6 billion year history. Wow. We look forward to seeing what developments uh, come about next year. Fred Watson, our astronomer at large, thank you so much. A great pleasure, Yvonne. Many thanks.